I just witnessed a total eclipse. It's a sign or an omen that it's time to stop and rank all six omen films from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all six Omen films. My list isn't the right list. It's just my list, and I would love to see yours. With that said, let's get started. Last, Omen for The Awakening. This was a made-for-TV movie, and it's just a cheap rehash of the original film with the classic way to tell the same story but a little bit different. This time, our Antichrist is a girl. They do the good old-fashioned gender swap, and maybe 30 years ago, this was a little bit more cutting edge, but even then, it doesn't really bring all that much new to the table. The biggest offense here is that this movie has some of the absolute worst musical cues I have ever heard in a film where you could take this exact same movie and just replace all of the new music with music from the original Omen and the movie just hops up an entire letter grade or two. It just works better. All throughout the entire movie, there's all these whimsical little quirky musical beats and scenes that are supposed to be scary, creepy, unsettling. <laughs> And it creates this scenario where it plays like a really bad comedy instead of like this horrifying story about the Antichrist. Like there's a scene where she makes a little boy who's a bully pee his pants. And instead of being horrific, it plays like a silly sequence where she's getting revenge on the bully. <laughs> Also, the main characters and cast are so bland that in the middle of the movie where there's a subplot that goes on way too long about a private investigator, it's by far the most compelling and interesting part of the film because the actor actually kind of has some spark to him and brings some life to this film. Of course, this is followed up for a section where he is killed by a wrecking ball. I came in like a wrecking ball. And then the director cuts directly to an egg cracking where the director thought, hey, this would be a fun time to get a little bit cute with the edit because like a guy gets cracked by a wrecking ball and then like an egg cracks. Get it? Get it? The whole movie's kind of filled with these hilariously like soft network friendly kills. Now the end of the movie does give us a final twist that is a little bit interesting, but the execution, the timing of it is so lackluster that even the most mildly of original ideas in this film doesn't go anywhere. So a movie that does not work on any level whatsoever and at times is wildly incompetent in its execution. In fifth, The Omen 3, The Final Conflict. And this is a frustrating one because there are some interesting ideas in here. It's fun to see Sam Neill as a villain and the worst villain of all time but the movie itself never fully delivers on its good ideas. Also, right from the beginning, it loses the intrigue and mystery that was so important to the original Omen, where here, Damien knows he's the Antichrist, and he's embraced it, the audience knows it, and so we're just watching him work out his plan. So it's just kind of like this weird political thriller with a religious bent to it. And thus a large portion of the film is just watching the Antichrist murder babies, which is not something that I am like, it's horrifying. It's dark, but it's not really something I find interesting or entertaining because it's just so matter of fact, like he's just having babies killed. Likewise, those those accidental, coincidental deaths that were such a big part of the first two films, not really present in this film nearly as much. And the other one is, it's, I just feel like there were gigantic missed opportunities with this film. They're calling it the final conflict. And it's all about how there's this gigantic army of secret Satan supporters. And out there, there's still some proper Catholics trying to fight back. That's a huge conflict. There's a lot to that, 
But it, it doesn't really play out that way. It plays out like these seven guys with knives at different times trying to send assassins and it's separate from the army of Satan supporters. And likewise, the movie tries to end on this note of like the triumphant return of Christ, of victory of good. But the movie doesn't set any of that up. It's only about Damien. And so it feels like out of left field, despite that it's like the most obvious thing to, to build up in your story, have two parallel narratives going at the same, same time as this rush to who will achieve their goal first. It's like a movie that there's ideas in there that are like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, I, I like where this is going. But the way they pieced it together, it, it just did not work for me. And as much as it tried to swell the music at the end, it just kind of ended really lackluster. Number four, The Omen 2006. And this is a strange exercise in remaking the movie shot for shot, line for line, with only the most superficial of changes. In fact, the person who wrote the actual script for the movie that was shot, Dan McDermott, received no on-screen credit for writing the film because WGA Arbitration decided that his script was too similar to the script of the original Omen, so David Seltzer, the writer of the original Omen, receives exclusive on-screen credit for writing the film despite not working on the movie at all. That's weird on so many different levels, but at its core, it kind of pinpoints what's wrong with the film in general. This is the equivalent of a cinematic cover band. It's professional, it's slick, it's hitting all the right notes, but they're intentionally making no changes. They're intentionally not adding their own style or interpretation. They're trying to sound exactly like someone else's song, or in this case, movie. The cast here's all competent. Several of the actors here, I actually really do enjoy. And I suppose there's ways in which picture quality and production design have benefited from 30 years of technological advances, but there's no real artistic merit here. There's nothing fresh or new. The writers, the directors bring absolutely nothing new to the table. Since the source material is good, since everyone's a professional, it's slick. It's a decent enough copy, but it's entirely soulless. If you're in the mood to watch this story, you would always just go back and rewatch the inspired original version, not the cover version. Today's video is brought to you by Raycon. It's that time of the year where I have to mow my lawn every single weekend. I'm trying to work out more and everything is better with Raycon's everyday earbuds. Raycon's offer amazing quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. Don't believe me? How about their tens of thousands of five-star reviews? Raycon's optimized gel tips are designed to comfortably fit into your ears to actually stay there, whether you're going for a jog or mowing the lawn. With eight hours of playtime and 30 two hours of battery life, whatever I'm up to, they're up for the task. Over this past weekend, I went to a film festival in Louisiana. I had to fly out there, wait in a bunch of lines, fly back, the whole time I'm using my Raycons, and on a single charge, they were able to last the entire trip. They have three customizable sound profiles so I can get perfect sound whether I'm listening to music or an audiobook. They also have a noise isolation mode as well as an awareness mode so I can hear what my kids are up to while still listening to an audiobook. Go to buyraycon.com slash Sean Chandler today to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right, you'll get 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Sean Chandler. Buyraycon.com slash Sean Chandler. Third, Damien the Omen 2. A bit of a rehash, but with competent enough execution that it still works pretty well. On the positive side, side the ever-expanding mythology with the allies to the Antichrist and the paranoia, all of that still works. Flip side, the sense of doom and dread that just lingered over the entire original 
doesn't feel quite as present in this film. There's a couple reasons for that. First off, the original film was driven so much by this mystery of was the child the Antichrist or not? What would you do if you discovered your child was the Antichrist? But with this movie, that question is already answered. We already know the answer to it. So you don't have that looming question or as primal of a fear of what if my child is pure evil, what will I have to do? Second kind of issue here is when you age up Damien to 12 years old, a 12 year old is just present enough in their thoughts versus a five year old that it humanizes him in a way that makes it less creepy and makes him more culpable for his actions in a way that a five year old just feels so innocent. And so just a little bit kind of gets lost there. I think you do gain a little bit as well because Damien now starts to choose to embrace this destiny, which in its own way is very, very dark. But kind of flipping back the other side to it, it's a little bit tough to make a movie where your protagonist is the epitome of evil. It's kind of interesting to explore the idea of the Antichrist realizing he's the Antichrist and what would that look like? It's it's fun to see that play out. And all the lore stuff where you have all these different Satanists out there working with him, conspiring and slowly revealing things to him. In particular, the big reveal that the husband and wife are on very different sides in all of this and their ways that they're conspiring. Even some of those ideas, though, I feel like that twist, instead of it being a final twist reveal at the end, what if that had been revealed 30 minutes earlier and it becomes kind of this tension throughout the film as you're watching one spouse basically conspire against their other for the purposes of their grander evil scheme? So I just felt like there's there's a bunch of things here that was like, that's cool. I dig that. But once again, just something a little bit off in the execution did not fully capture the greatness of the original. Our runner up, The First Omen. I was not looking forward to this film. I don't tend to like nunsploitation movies about nuns. That's just not my brand of horror. The trailers for it didn't seem to capture the actual spirit of the film. So it just looked once again like creepy images involving nuns walking around in reverse. So I went in very skeptical to this film. And it also was odd that it was coming out three weeks after Immaculate, which has an eerie number of similarities to this film. But the movie itself, it won me over. Like this is a solid omen prequel that does what good prequels do, which is to flesh out the backstory in a way that actually answers questions worth answering. It gives more motivation and cultural context to the events that led to the original film and why are members of the Catholic Church a part of this insane conspiracy to bring about the Antichrist? Where's that coming from? This movie answers that in a way that like, in light of the 20th century, you go, okay, I, I see what's kind of going on here. And it has a little bit of commentary to it without in any way getting preachy. And then even as you, you dive into it, the movie is filled with really like, horrifying imagery in different ways. Uh, the, the two birthing scenes, I could not believe some of what they showed in this movie. And as someone that can get squeamish with surgical stuff and births, was absolutely looking away and saw just a little peeking through my fingers, saw a few things, but I wish I hadn't seen that. That was a little bit more than I wanted to see. But the thing that it does really well is it, it manages to, to tell a very different story. This does not in any way feel like a rehash of the original Omen, but it captures the paranoia the the conspiracy side of that film where we're trying to figure out who's behind everything, who can you trust, who's conspiring against who and why. So I just really dug that about the film. And as it went, it went along, you're getting more and more invested as we built out the world of the omen in a way that, that felt right, it felt earned. One thing that really impressed me about this film is that they doubled down on some of the weirder aspects of the original film with Damien's parents and what exactly were they. It commits to it and makes it even more 
horrifying, more terrifying, more grotesque, while just embracing the weird. I do wish we had more of the accidental deaths. They're kind of set up at the beginning and the rest of the film doesn't play it out. And that the last little scene where it's like, we're doing a franchise. That was weird. In a lot of ways, this is like the rogue one of the Omen franchise, and I say that entirely as a, a compliment. But in first place, the original, the Omen, and I was super late to this party. Now, I've been a huge Richard Donner fan for a very long time. The original Superman is a foundational film for me, but somehow I had never seen the Omen until just about three years back. Finally watched it, and it absolutely lived up to its reputation. And despite being almost 50 years old now, it's still a highly, highly effective horror film that gets inside your head based on a premise that tackles interesting questions, which is, what would it take for you to believe that your child is the Antichrist? Followed by, what would it take for you to believe you need to kill your own child? Those are horrifying ideas. Set aside the gore, lingering in that story is unsettling because it's such dark subject matter and that's at the core of what this film is about. And because of that, it's be able to just have this looming sense of dread and doom all over the entire film. From the get-go, something happens and you're like, oh, this isn't good. And it only keeps getting worse and worse and worse until the credits roll. And you're like, wow, they fully committed. They went for it. Nice part of what's kind of going on here is this sense of paranoia tied into the conspiracy and the, the, the sequels, prequels elaborated on all of this. But even in the first one, it's this present that there's people out there that are conspiring to do something horrific and manipulating everything taking place to lead to their own dark ends. And because of that, you just you just feel like you're in this lived in, very dark world. Of course, one of the things the movie is famous for is these accidental kills, the accidental deaths where a series of things happen that take people out. And they're, they're just still memorable. The decapitation, the pull, the impalement, you remember them. They stick with you because they're good kills. They don't have to be the most graphic, but they're interesting and memorable. And of course, you just have a fantastic score that just fills out the sense of doom and dread perfectly. Put it all together, you get an all-time great horror film that truly has stood the test of time. It still works all these years later, so it comes in at number one. Be sure to join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of the Omen films. I've done a ton of other rankings of horror franchises. You can find them out right over there in that playlist. Almost all of the big major ones. I've already done them over there. Thank you so much for watching. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.